this. Why medical terminology? Why would I excite you with this wonderful topic? <laughs> Because we're going to be people that are going to talk a bunch of words and we're not going to help you know what they're saying. Like what people? Nurses, doctors. Doctors, yeah. Other people in our profession. Secondly, you want to basically get your point across the correct way, I guess you could kind of say. I like that, yeah. Any other thoughts? You sound like you know what you're talking about, you're believable. <laughs> that would be a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> you could dance your way through just about anything. Yeah. So yeah, it is. In every oh, this is a good about thing, but every profession kind of has its own little language. That's kind of what separates each of the professions, right? So, anybody read legal contracts? I uh -uh. What? So whoever for shall with the, yeah, right? They have their way of talking, and there's reason for what they do and what they do, right? Accountants are going to do the same thing. You have T bars and graphs and all sorts of stuff that most folks go, well, why? My, here are my account numbers are 20 digits long. And I'm going, supplies, operating, mailing. It's simple to me, but it makes perfectly good sense to me. And they can explain what every digit means, or every series of digits means. So it, it is a way, basically what professions tend to do is kind of develop their own little language. So it's kind of like folks in France talk their language, and we talk a different language. So we might be able to share similar things, but we're going to have difficulty if we get together and communicate. Right, so that's kind of the background. So you're absolutely right. There's other stuff too, right? So having that ability to communicate with each other, because we all have varying levels, right? So you guys basically complete this course in one semester. Physicians will basically go through four years of college, four years of med school, and then however many years of residency, depending on what they want to do. Um, so but anyway, they're, they're in school for 10, 12, some of them 15 years. But they're, very, they're becoming very precise in what they do and what they know and how they do it. So being able to communicate to them, but then also communicate to the patient is important. Because basically when you go and you, if you go to a nursing home to pick up a patient, they're going to have this chart. And that chart's going to be filled with all sorts of words. And you need to be able to read those words and to understand them. Is it, actually, as we progress, it'll be cool. My wife has a little nook, and so she's reading a book. If you push on the little word, it'll pull up the dictionary and say, this is what the word means. <laughs> so in medical records, that would be great, because you go, what was that? <laughs> oh, okay. So but we're just not there yet. But it's probably coming. All right. So yeah, so we need to be able to communicate with each other. We need to be able to translate this stuff so that we understand it. We've got to be able to talk to our patients. We need to be able to communicate with our own colleagues. And there is definitely that part of sounding the role and sounding profession, right? Because if you walk in there and go, um, well, I'm not, I don't know. You know, the patients are going to be going, mm, can you call some names? Maybe. It could be. So, yeah, so sounding confident, understanding what they're talking about plays a role, and especially really in this community. The, the biggest employer in this community is healthcare. So whenever you go out, folks, likelihood they have some sort of exposure to medicine. They're going to know things. And, and so they're going to be throwing out words. And so you need to have at least an understanding of how to, how to, how to get them. All right, right. So there is the wonderful stuff. OK. So uh, anybody ever study Latin? Nobody's that easy. So call me. But it, it helps, it actually does. Latin and Greek are the base term for, for all of these words that we use. Okay? And in general, if you really kind of look at English, we do kind of similar stuff, right? So the root is the main part of the word. And then you have the prefix and suffix. The prefix goes before the word, the suffix goes after the word. So there's basically, in general, kind of three core parts. So we'll do some explanations here. 
Alright, so the main part where every word has at least one word for one point. One. We combine words. Alright, so here, right? So to speak, right, is a root word. So basically we're going to be talking about it. You add a suffix on the end, the speaker, that now changes the meaning of the word slightly. Make sense, right? So basically you have the root word and then stuff before, stuff after. Right, so typically, we talked about it comes from Latin and Greek. Typically, this root, wow, that hurt. Typically, the root word refers to some sort of body part. So it might be a cell, and it's called a, a cyst, or it might be the heart, and it's cardio, cardiac, or something like that. Okay. So here's, I'm sure there's a big long list of stuff. Okay, All right? So here's some examples, right? So dense basically means tooth, cardio means heart, gastro means stomach, pancreas means pancreas, bio means life, right? So what's ology? Study, study of, right? So biology is a study of life, okay? Cardiology, what do you think that is? Study of the heart. Study of the heart and the <coughs> system, right? So you guys basically have kind of experienced a lot of this. The big thing, well, I think actually Latin and Greek kind of help, is that you understand what all of these little things mean. So you get those root words, and now it's just a matter of combining the stuff. Okay. So this looks formidable when you get there, but if you start to break down the words into little structures, you can kind of start picking up stuff. So sometimes things get kind of tricky, because if you go dense and derma, and you don't realize that there are differences, sometimes you might get kind of confused. So I would always kind of encourage you to look stuff up if you're not sure. Um, and don't assume that they all kind of similar things mean similar stuff because it can get you in trouble. Okay. So sometimes, in order for us to speak this stuff, between the root word and the suffix or the prefix, or if we actually have two root words together, they actually will add a vowel in there to make it flow a little bit better. Because otherwise it would look something like Russian or German or something where you get the <laughs> sounds. Okay. So anyway, that's basically kind of what all that's saying. All right, so but you get these combining forms of stuff. So here. All right. All right, so. Gastro, what do you say gastro is? G R S T R? Stomach. Stomach, right? So gastrointestinal virus. The stomach intestinal virus is kind of what you'll see sometimes. Okay. All right, so here, so osteoarthritis. All right. So osteo, anybody know what that is? Bone, Bone right? Arthritis. Joint. joint, yeah. So bone joint disease and inflammation of the bone joint, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> all right. So anyway, does this kind of makes sense how they put words together. Right. So somewhere in here. Alright. So here's a list of common root words, right? So now we're not going to come and say that. I'm almost sure we're not going to ask words kind of like we're just defining the meaning of this word. Okay? Typically our tests don't do recall. So how many who's it's and the what's it's? How many bones of the body? There's very limited information there. Where we typically try to test you is kind of the application of that. So we may say, hey, there's, you know, us, you know, your patient suffering from osteoarthritis, they would have a condition causing problems with something. So anyway, where you have to take it and go, okay, yeah, so osteoarthritis, they were talking about kind of bone and joint stuff, so then I would look kind of like the musculoskeletal system. Okay. So where you have to take the information and apply it in a different situation. We're not just going to recall stuff. Okay? So 
in your books okay, or on the slides, there's charts and stuff. Those are good to know, but I'm not going to ask you to reproduce that chart. So we'll talk, remind me, we'll talk more about the testing stuff and how we go we, as we kind of go along. Right? So, but I would still say it's, it's the more that you can learn this stuff and understand this, you will then be able to start kind of applying it. Because okay? as we, as you go along through the chapter in cardiology, they're going to start talking about all sorts of stuff. So arteries, nerves, veins, and they're going to start talking about the different types of stuff. So having understanding all of these will be helpful. Alright, so the suffix is the end. Alright, so we're going to do the end. We talked about that. The suffix is the end. Alright, so somewhere in there. There's some common suffixes. Right? And then somewhere in here, I'm sure there's common prefixes. So, and these are actually kind of important stuff, right? So you're going to see hyper, hypo a lot. You're going to see Brady and tacky a lot. Hyper basically means up or elevated or high. Hypo means low, below normal. Okay, Brady is slow, tacky is fast. So the prefixes you'll actually use fairly frequently. So yeah, so you see a lot of this monopoly anyway. There's stuff. So you know, again, I'm not gonna. We're not. You're not gonna test it. But the more that you get this, the better, the easier the rest of the class is gonna be. Okay. Alright. So questions on that? So you'll see how the kind of the words get put together, how you can combine several root words. You get the prefix and the suffix. So the more that you kind of figure out how to differentiate those words, the easier life will be for you next.